In the last few videos of this series, we examined the role caffeine has on endurance performance, like running, biking, and the like, including how much of an improvement you might experience, how much to consume to experience that benefit, as well as a mysterious difference in some people that is linked to their genes. On that last point, there are some people that not only don't experience improved performance from caffeine consumption, but they experience a dramatic worsening in their performance. So in this video, I'd like to explain why, but beyond that, I'd also like to float a cautionary tale if you are one of those individuals, because it could affect your health as well. There are a number of mechanisms for why caffeine has a positive performance effect. So this applies to the fast metabolizers we discussed last video. First, when we go about our day, our cells produce a metabolite, a molecule that accumulates in our bloodstream known as adenosine. Adenosine is one of the major drivers of sleepiness and reduced alertness. It also increases our perception of pain. Caffeine, it just so happens, has a similar molecular structure as adenosine, making it a perfect bind for the same receptors as adenosine. In doing so, it not only blocks adenosine from performing its function in our cells, it causes a different reaction within our cells. So, for example, in the neurons of our brain, it inhibits drowsiness, increasing alertness, and reducing our pain perception. All these effects allow us to hold out at a more intense pace during endurance performance. Beyond that effect, Caffeine also affects our adrenal glands. These glands will then release epinephrine, a molecule that stimulates greater muscle contractions when it binds the muscle cells, some of which may be mediated by increased calcium release, a critical trigger for muscle contractions. I say may be mediated because although epinephrine has its, this effect, caffeine may also directly cause the effect in muscle. However, that may be at concentrations far exceeding what we're normally exposed. In extremely long endurance events like marathons, caffeine also stimulates lipolysis from the fat cells. That means that caffeine binds the fat cells of our body and stimulates them to release fat molecules into the bloodstream for the muscles to use as energy. Slanting energy utilization from more fat rather than glucose carbohydrate is highly beneficial since we store more fat in our body than carbohydrates in the form of blood sugar and glycogen. So the later we run low on carbohydrates, the better our performance, hence the promotion of fat oxidation, fat burning, to be highly beneficial. This likely does not make a difference in shorter endurance events like a 5K or a 10K. Finally, when caffeine is metabolized by the enzyme cytochrome P450, it is converted into new molecules, but these molecules are not inert, meaning they serve a function independent of caffeine. The primary molecule produced is called paraxanthine. Paraxanthine has been shown to be a vasodilator by increasing nitric oxide levels. That means the arteries of your body open more widely, allowing more blood flow. And more blood flow means more nutrients, oxygen, and the removal of unwanted metabolites offering a benefit. There may be other benefits of paraxanthine as well. All right, these are some of the reasons caffeine plays a positive role in fast metabolizers. However, I mentioned that for some people, there is no benefit, and for yet others, there is a worsening effect. So why is that? And what's the potential negative health effects that could occur? The reason some people experience worse performance from caffeine and should avoid it is due to their speed of metabolism. These individuals tend to metabolize caffeine more slowly due to a genetic variant or mutation in their cytochrome P450 enzyme produced by their cells. So the caffeine remains in their system for far longer. Now, granted, that might have us thinking that these individuals would have super performance because the molecule is always present, always binding the muscle cells, fat cells, and adrenal cells. And some of that may actually be the case. However, another action of caffeine has is the increase in vasoconstriction, the opposite of vasodilation mentioned earlier, which means caffeine would reduce blood flow to and from the muscles, thereby limiting those key deliveries, nutrients and oxygen and the removal of other metabolites. Now, 
That might seem counter to what we discussed earlier, but it actually falls right in line. In fast metabolizers, caffeine can play a role in alleviating drowsiness. But as time passes, the benefit comes through paraxanthine as caffeine is metabolized to paraxanthine. Switching from the alertness and the epinephrine benefits to encouraging more blood delivery. However, in slow metabolizers, they may still achieve a benefit in alertness and epinephrine, but don't shift to increase blood delivery benefits because their caffeine metabolizing enzyme does not convert caffeine to paraxanthine quickly enough. So it is very much a matter of timing that distinguishes the two. That said, I did mention that there may be some potential health pitfalls from metabolizing caffeine more slowly. So in reading one of the studies we went over, the researchers mentioned some potential problems with caffeine in slow metabolizers specifically. If you paid attention and created some parallels earlier, you heard me say that caffeine leads to vasoconstriction of the arteries. Well, this also applies to those feeding the heart. So continuously elevated caffeine levels can reduce nutrient and oxygen delivery to the heart, but beyond that can increase blood pressure as the vessels containing blood narrow. This also occurs in fast metabolizers, but the effect is short-lived and dissipates quickly. In slow metabolizers, blood pressure can remain elevated for hours. Now, the long-term effects are something that hasn't been covered, so it's an area that needs to be investigated further. This also goes beyond the scope of exercise and performance at endurance events, but caffeine consumption in slow metabolizers could affect sleep as well, which would lead to a wide-reaching negative effects beyond blood pressure, although it would add to that issue as well. So ultimately, if you are a slow metabolizer, you should avoid caffeine. Everyone else, welcome to a nice performance boost by simply consuming a ubiquitous molecule. If you're interested in delving deeper into the science on this topic or others, then I'll speak to you in the near future. Bye.